Hi and welcome to lesson 10 of DMAD Marine Mammal Research Association's free QGIS course. This course is for beginners to intermediates. I'm Tim Aubrey and today we're going to be looking at how we can extract our raster data by a mask and how we can then use pseudo colour to make it a bit easier to understand. Please keep remember to keep liking, subscribing and most importantly sharing these videos as it helps us to reach lots more people like you that might find these lessons useful. Okay, thanks. Okay, so in the last lesson we got this far. We merged our different rasters together and it gave us this data set here, which is useful um, because we can recognize some key features. So up in the north there's the Boca Kotorska um, set of bays and we've got Skadar Lake here. But it's still quite difficult to work with. Um, especially if we're to bring Montenegro on top of this and just show how much excess we've got in our raster data. So the next thing we're going to do is just effectively use the Montenegro shapefile as a cookie cutter to, to extract some of our raster data. So the way we do this is we go up to raster, extraction, and we're just going to come across, across to clip raster by mask layer. So our input layer is going to be the merged file we created in the previous lesson. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to go to the mask layer. Um, we're going to keep it as the Montenegrin file. And then we don't have to change anything else, but I'm just going to make sure I save this file because I want to have this file forever. So I'm going to call it ME raster because that's the Montenegro underscore raster shape file I'm interested in and I've already got one so I'm just going to replace it hit run and we now have a very convenient raster which only goes to the extent of our country file so I'm just going to um, remove the previous one Okay, so now this is, if I drop this under Montenegro again, you can see it's a perfect fit. So our darkest values on the map we can see here go from minus 4 to our highest values of 2369. And what we can do is just double click here to get into our symbology and we can make this a bit more representative. So, if we change this from single band grey to single band pseudo colour, you remember we talked about pseudo colour in the lectures, and we have an awful lot of colour ramps which we can choose from. Um, and especially if we go into create new colour ramp, we've got more, even more options. I don't know if anyone uses R, but we've got the colour brewer. This is can be a really useful um, set to use so just hit OK and you'll see it's got all the different colors for us here um, and we've got loads of pastels and things so you can just have a flick through and see what's useful to you I'm going to stick with this spectral click OK and then I'm going to come in and edit it just a couple of these colors so that's one way we could do it and if you see we've got red to blue um, traditionally probably it'd be more likely to be invert this color ramp so we have our highest values in red so it looks more like this and this gives us some really useful information you can see that we've got this initial sort of group of mountains around the um, sea and then it drops back to a much lower line land before we have the mountains in the north and in the east uh, which is where the national parks are in Montenegro. Okay so what I'm going to show you how to do now is just to make something that might be more useful to you so I'm going to make this is more of a like sort of a, a classic topo colors if you will so I'm going to make it a green um, coming on to a more yellowy colour um, 
Uh, and then we want a sort of a reddy colour, or even browny colour. Just make this a bit browner. And finally, it's quite common to see this with a white colour. So, just going to go right the way over to the sort of the whites over here. And I maybe didn't need all four classes, but this is more of a classic topographic colour. Um, obviously, play around, I've done that very quickly, so it's, a, it's very rough. But you can see that our low lying areas and our valleys and things are represented by this green. Um, and then we've got our sort of um, foothills and yellow going up through the orange, red and white. And finally our very highest areas are topped with the white, which arguably represents snow. Um, like I said, I just did that very quickly. I would have liked to have uh, spent a bit longer doing it, but that wasn't the case. So I'm just going to leave that there, and that'll be it for the lesson. Um, in the next lesson, we're going to look at how we can use the raster calculator. Okay, thanks. Bye.